Thanks for joining us today on another episode of Crooked Mustache. Today's episode, we're going to be focusing on the specifics of removing a Jeep Liberty KJ engine. Stay tuned. You've opened the hood to your Jeep and you're wondering exactly what it is that you're going to confront, what you should do, what you shouldn't take off. That's what we're going to talk about right now. There's two fasteners at the top and then once those are removed, you can, you can gently pull the radiator slightly back towards the engine, lift it straight out, out of the way. After that, you're going to take off your upper radiator hose or, or you will have, to, yeah, you're going to take off your upper radiator hose and your lower radiator hose down there. By the way, that lower portion, that's where the thermostat is. If you have any intention of replacing your thermostat, that was the time to do it. You're going to have that once the engine comes out, you're going to have the easiest time to do it as well with the water pump. But right now we're talking about getting the engine out. This is what you, the front of your car or the front of your engine should look like after you take out the radiator fan. You do not need to remove the radiator. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to undo here to make the job as easy, as simple as possible. Let's start with that. Okay, so you've taken off your radiator hoses and you've taken off your radiator. I know that right here, it shows a threaded nut and some of these water pumps, which that is the water pump, come with an actual fan clutch. Both the Jeeps that I encountered um, use an electrical fan. First thing you're gonna do, you'll notice that I've got a socket on here in this picture. This is a 15 millimeter, so you're gonna go clockwise. That's gonna loosen up the tension or loosen up the belt. You can remove the belt. With the belt removed, Here's what you need to focus on. You're gonna remove the alternator, which is here. Let me make that thicker. There we go. You're gonna remove the alternator completely. Alternator comes out. So this part right here, this is your alternator. That's what's coming out. The alternator is held in place by this bolt right here, this bolt right here, and this bolt right here. The only one you'll be able to put back is the one on the top. The two on the bottom actually go through bosses. Uh, you know, the actual thread, the, not threaded, but the actual board holes through the front of the block and then they screw into the back of the alternator. So those are gonna have to stay in the alternator. At least from 05 to 07, I was not able to swap over the alternators. They will bolt into the same place, but the physical connector on the harness is different. So that means your alternator, you've already taken care of that. The next two things you're gonna focus on are, and I'm gonna change colors for this one. So the next thing you're gonna focus on is this thing right here, which is your power steering pump. This is held on with three bolts. Once you have the belt off, I'm trying to remember if it's a 12, uh, if it's a 12 or a 13, and you're going to use one of the holes. As you rotate the wheel, you're going to put your socket through, loosen the bolt, pull it all the way out, rotate the wheel, look for the next socket. There's three of them, and I'll show you a picture in a moment exactly where those three are. Once you have that out, you're only going to remove it from the block. Don't disconnect any lines. All you're going to do is remove it from the block Move it to the side, and if you want, zip tie it to something just so it's out of the way so you're not putting any strain on the hoses. That does not need to be disconnected. This is gonna save you from having to put new brake, uh, sorry, not new brake fluid, new power steering fluid, from having to bleed the system. You won't have to worry about anything. Finally, the thing you're gonna worry about is your AC compressor, which is right here. This is held on with one bolt here, a bolt, which you can't see because of the angle that I took it, here, and then this one, I believe this one back here. Again, this is the same thing. You're gonna disconnect the harness connections, leave the Freon lines connected. Once you unbolt the entire assembly, you're gonna pull it to the side, find something on the, on the left side of the engine where you can pass some zip ties through and you're gonna zip tie it out of the way. That's gonna save you a ton of time when you go to put your engine back in. So at this point, you have taken off your AC compressor, you've taken off your alternator, and you've taken off your power steering pump. Now you should have nothing on the front of the engine. So no. with that said, with that stuff moved out of the way, can I zoom in? Yes, it's gonna be these bolts right here and these bolts. So you'll see these holes right here. There's eight of them. Six of them will correspond to being the bolt which your coil actually um, bolts down onto. So there's a nut that holds your coil down. You're gonna take that nut off and then you're going to take the bolt itself out and that's what will lift your intake manifold. Now once you do that, as you see, there are six intake ports into the heads. On the intake side, there are little rubber seals and that is what seals the intake to the runners. There's no intake gaskets. It's little rubber seals. They're, they just make sure that you don't lose them. This part right here, 
that is the uh, fuel line attachment from the system that's over here. There is a tool. It's available at Harbor Freight, Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone. They're a fuel line disconnect tool. It is worth the trip. <laughs> and let's say $10, $15, depending on the pack that it comes in. It is literally four seconds. The tool goes around the bottom part here. It actually goes around the, the shaft of the, of the pipe. You slide it up, it disengages the lock and you can pull the line right off. It takes five seconds. So once you pull this off, the reason for doing so is there are, and I'll show you in another picture, there are two bolts roughly here and here that you can access from here. So you'll be able to take these bolts out. These are 15s. You'll be able to take these out. And these are the two at the top of the transmission. And I will show you those now. Now we're looking at the back of the engine. You will be able to access, let me hold the flashlight here. Okay. When you take the uh, intake manifold off, you'll be able to access this bolt and that bolt. That's it. Those are the only two bolts you can access easily from the top of the engine. Everything else is going to be from the bottom. This little thing here, that's called the starter locator plate. This is supposed, this is, everyone says, the biggest pain in the ass because if this thing shifts while you're loading the engine in, which you can see that it literally moves on its own, if this thing shifts, you're screwed. So a couple of people say that they actually, um, uh, they hit this with like a chisel to basically pinch it up against, un, up against the plate so it holds the plate in. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. The rest of the bolts, So actually it is mounted this way, okay? These four holes correspond to these four holes. The, this mounts up onto the, on, uh, this mounts between the uh, oil pan and the flex plate uh, flywheel, however you wanna look at it. Did not have to take the oil pan off, as you can see. I didn't even drain the oil in this thing. These four bolts are pretty much just corresponding to this thing. There's also four bolts that are here that you're going to undo and then this plate drops out of the way. You can set it to the side. So here's what you're looking at from underneath. I have the camera set to wide perspective. Okay, so here's that plate that we talked about earlier. There are the two bolts that hold it uh, to the engine block. There's two on that side and then there's two on this side. One bolt there. That's this one. And then the other two are actually here on the transmission side. And then here's the opposite. So there's that bolt and then the two that hold it there. That plate comes off and then you access, let me switch the flashlight to the pointing. There we go. And then you access the flywheel bolts in here. Um, and this is enough space for you to get a wrench onto the bolts that are on the, uh, the flywheel flex plate. Now with those eight bolts removed, sorry guys, this is ultra wide, so this is the best I can do. With those eight bolts removed, ha I would recommend taking these two out last and have your hand ready because as soon as you take this out, this whole thing will drop. So see, there's the two bolts there. Now, set that to the side probably the only thing not covered in rust. And there you go. There's one torque converter bolt. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a socket on the front of the engine, on the main crank pulley, and just slowly rotate uh, as you go. So you're gonna put a 21 mil socket on the front on the crank pulley. I used an extension in this case, and I'm gonna use a breaker bar to hold it. And then the bolts that are underneath on the torque converter, uh, those are 18s and you're just gonna loosen one, turn the crank, get to the other, loosen that one, turn the crank, get to the other, loosen that one, turn the crank, get to the other. So these are the bolts that you're gonna be taking out. There's four of them. Once that's done, you're all set. After you take that off, you have, if you can see it up there, there's the head of the one bolt on this side that goes from the engine to the transmission. It goes from the engine side to the transmission side. I will do my best to show it in a, there we go. 
So that plastic piece, which is what your oxygen sensor clips to up there, that cover is uh, on the other bolt that you have to take off. And it's the same on the other side. That is, and I'll show a picture here of what I'm talking about. That's those two, after you take the two bolts at the top off that you can access with the intake manifold removed, that bolt and its pair on the other side are the bolts that you have to access from under here. You won't be able to reach them from up top. Um, and then here on this side, this is where it's gonna get difficult, but I did do it. I disconnected this section of the exhaust from, the up, from up top, but I didn't remove it. And I did not remove this. So it is possible to do it the most troublesome thing you're going to deal with is the um, starter, which there you can see one bolt right there. The other bolt goes through, goes from the engine side to the transmission and it is above, actually no, I stand corrected, it goes from the transmission side, it's right there. And then just above that one is that other bolt. And you can see that this oxygen sensor's clip is there as well. And that's it. Um, there's the two bolts you need to undo on your exhaust side, same thing on the other side. And on this side of the engine, the only other thing you have to undo, I can't actually show it to you from here, um, towards the front, you won't see it, but it's the grounding cable for the starter. Little spot right there. I'll put an arrow on the screen so you guys can see, but I'll point to it. That is the part where the ground for the starter attaches to. Uh, that is pro that's honestly, that's probably going to be the, the last thing you take off as the engine comes out. There's no sensors that you need to unplug on this side right here. That is the crank position sensor or the reluctor or whatever. And then the harness is clipped to that bolt. So that's all you gotta worry about on this side. That's everything on the bottom of the engine. We're here, but you probably already took it off by now. This thing right here, that's your oil pressure uh, sending unit. But that is um, following along with the harness. You probably already found that and disconnected it. That is located uh, pretty much right above the oil filter. And then there's your oil filter. So that's all you have to worry about. Most likely you should have all of those undone. Uh, if this side looks weird, it's because it's actually missing the motor mount. So here's your motor mount bolt. That's all you're doing. You're just gonna loosen it. You're not removing anything. And then that's going to allow the bolt to remain supporting the weight of the engine. In this picture, you'll see that the actual motor mounts sit right about there, the bolts for them. So you don't actually have to remove them on the contrary you actually just want to loosen them up so that they'll that uh, the engine will move freely out of the mounts because the bolts are actually supporting the weight of it so this is what allows you to undo all of the hardware that attaches the engine to the transmission um, undo your exhaust in my case i had to le undo the manifold because the these bolts on the opposite side just weren't coming off by leaving those bolts in Basically, all you have to worry about is making sure that everything is disconnected from the engine and when you lift it up and out, you don't have to worry about anything. What I did want to point out here was where I the bolts and the hardware that I used. So here what I've actually, oh, I keep forgetting it's on this side. So here what I've actually tried to do is highlight the two bolts that I did use specifically for the engine leveler. And again, these were the two longest uh, bolts out of all of the hardware yeah because i checked the ones above and uh, one of the ones below on the right side and these just happen to be the longest ones of the bunch i basically saw that the bolts from that would fit through the holes of the uh in of the engine leveler the little hole that's in here and i used them the good part with them is with those two holes is that those were the bolts that had the most purchase and they're pretty equally uh they're pretty they're located pretty equally on the left and right side um relative to the center of the engine so it gives you a good a uh, good position especially so that you can tilt the engine forward and back depending on what makes it easier for you to get this in because you are going to use an engine leveler not ratchet straps <laughs> please now i know that um i've seen like especially with the typically with the v8s with like hemis and ls engines um there's actually uh brackets that will bolt directly to the cylinder heads under the assumption that this metal right here is actually strong enough to support 
its portion of the weight of the engine, that's where I decided to attach a connection point in uh, for my engine leveler. The weird thing is that because of the way the cylinder heads are designed and I wanted to get a point that was as far back as possible, you're able to do this specifically on the passenger side because of this section right here. This is after the third cylinder from the front. On the driver's side, you're unable to. So this is what it looks like on the driver's side. And here I've highlighted the point as to the reason that I did it there was because that's an actual closed loop. As you can see, there's nothing back here. This is actually where your EGR valve would be on newer engines right here. And on older engines, there's just nothing. Um, so there is actually, you can see that here, there's no, there's nothing to attach to. So effectively that's the attachment points on the back and on the front of the engine, um, obviously, this blue line where I've highlighted, don't use the fuel rail. You don't want to damage that. Um, and the reason I'm saying don't use it is because more than likely, whatever you use to pull the engine out, you're going to use to put the engine back in. So you don't want to grab the fuel rail on your new engine. So with that, this is pretty much what you're hoping to get to. You should be um, pretty much ready to take your engine out. All right, so now we've arrived at the point of actually pulling the engine and here you go. This is footage from our last episode. Um, the last episode pretty much was just chronicling the uh, what we've been actually doing to get to this point where this is the process you're going to go through. It's very tedious. Um, take your time. Make sure that you don't break anything on the way out. In conjunction with my previous video, if you want to see, uh, if you want to see, albeit under time lapse, everything we went through to actually get the engine out has provided some assistance. Hopefully, helps you avoid some of the hurdles that I ran into and. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked our video, go ahead and hit that like button. Really appreciate it. it. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming content and click the notification bell so you're notified every time we post a video. For Crooked Mustache, I'm Alfred. We'll see you next time. Dale.